uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, King Marzipan face himself, Eric Bowling, who is melting right before us. I'm just saying that if you're going to put that much lip filler in your face, maybe because of gravity, put it in your forehead and let it run down. Don't put it all in your cheeks and then go straight to a bouncy house. I don't know what the post lip filler treatment program is, but dear God, he looks like a Dick Tracy villain. What is happening? His, his face looks like a high school ceramics project. I made an ashtray. Um, I thought that was a bust of Eric Bowling. Um, but one of the uh, phrases, and, and we, we haven't had quite the chime in. And hi, everybody. Welcome, chat room. Sorry, just come right in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, this is uh, Giuliani showing up in this. And we haven't, I have Giuliani. This is from the 12th. So this is before. This is not the most recent thing. Obviously, there's there's been you know more recent clips, and I will use them. But I just wanted to point this out. The title of this one, Giuliani, one of the most outrageous things that's happened in American judicial history. That this is your keyword, kids. Outrageous. The minute they say something that is outrageous, that is outrageous. You would even ask me that question. I find these charges outrageous. It's outrageous. Outrageous. That means it's true. <laughs> that means it's, I mean, it's not even a drinking game. They are already drunk. It's, it is uh, true. That's an admission. If, if any, if you ever hear a politician go, the, this whole thing is, this story is outrageous. I'm offended at the outrageous you know, attacks on my honor, my ethics, my morals, my political character. Outrageous. Yes. Outrageous is a dead giveaway. It is you, it just without fail. Just count on it. If they say outrageous, it's true. Um, so I I love that he started off this way. Now this one's relatively short, and we might get to it afterwards. But I want to first go to where is it? This okay. So this is this is Giuliani on. Newsmax, he's on uh, Wise Guys with John Tobacco. Hey, Johnny Tobacco. Hey, you fucking guy. Where's, hey, who is this? Who is this Johnny Tobacco person I've heard about? Fantastic. I have no idea who Johnny Tobacco is. I'm sure we'll find out. I'm very excited about the prospect. Um, Let's see, what do I have here? Oh no, I have to reset all my lenses. That would be sad. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see, one second. I know, I know, I know. Let's see. I have to do, I, I lost one of my Thanks, hold on, and then we go back to, whoops. Okay, before we get into this, we gotta have some stuff ready to go. Um, and, all right, we'll have to go dig that up. All right, we'll worry about it later. All right, we'll figure this out. <clears throat> Here we go, all right, Rudy Giuliani, welcome. Sorry, I got distracted with computer stuff. It happens. It's been known to happen. Um, but in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a Giuliani exclusive. What Trump told me right after the FBI raid, the fall of NYC, and more. 13 minutes of, uh, apparently he didn't tell you much after the raid. A couple of sentences. He probably used the word outrageous. Let's find out. Oh, hold, hold on one second. I'm going to turn this thing on. Here we go. All right. Well, oh, wait. Why am I? Why am I not hearing this? Hold on. Go back. You watch your wise guys. Yeah, this is the show. That's not like the rest. This is the show. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. Hold on. I, pl I plugged the wrong thing in the headphones. So I heard that I wasn't hearing the thing. 
<clears throat> okay, Johnny, Johnny Tomatoes. Will we go out and hit the streets <laughs> and talk to the people, and then here we, we go. take it to the table. Me and Johnny Please Tomatoes. This week, joined again as usual by my crew, the founder of Citizens Against Political Persecution, Garrett Gastronova, our resident. Not she, yeah, she was sick of being persecuted for her politics. Knockout artist and uh, the America's lawyer himself, Lou Jalaminos here. Lou Jalaminos is here. He's America's lawyer. He will go against anyone who tries to steal government documents and hand them out to, you know, to anybody who doesn't have clearance. Clarence, you got to have that. All right. All right. This is good. Yeah. Mr. Cate. And again. We have a repeat performance, the highest rated show we've ever had, <laughs> was when we had America's mayor with us, Rudy Giuliani. Well, thanks for having again, me. Rudy. I Thank you so much. Shut up, let him finish the fucking, in he's introducing you, dumb dumb. Shut up. Much. We had a back. blast. Um, even the last time you were on, uh, Jimmy Kimmel um, kind of lampooned us on his good, uh, late good. night I'm show. I'm sure it wasn't funny because he's not funny, but I mean... <laughs> he called you, know. you uh, Recount Dracula was his nickname. Well, that's you. very funny. Late night stuff. Yeah, he's born, you know, hey, you know, he made some... So, I don't know, he's funny. I think he's funny. He's funny. That was funny. I mean, he's like, he wasn't funny what he said about you, but it was... But we did laugh. <laughs> Comedian. One of the things that we do here that is kind of a little refreshing, as you know, from the talking heads on the lamestream media is, is that we sit here in an empty restaurant in the middle of the day, uh, basically double dipping on the place and using it as a write off. We go out and talk to regular people. Yeah, we go talk to regular people. And you're a regular person. Yeah, you're full of prunes. And, uh, That's great, by the way. This week, some big topics, of course. Uh, Mayor Adams in New York is in a uh, war of words with uh, Greg Abbott from Texas from shipping of uh, illegal aliens. And uh, we're going to get to the Donald Trump raid, which you have exclusive stuff for us on. But uh, Oh boy, oh boy, you got exclusive stuff. I'm so excited about this. I got to tell you, how can you turn it up a little? I will gladly turn this up a little bit for you. Uh, I will say for the record, if you don't mind, uh, you know, uh, that uh, the, the sound is shit on their end. Let's, uh, Kara, take a look at this woman and what her perspective was on. Let's play this little, uh, Kara, you, you're here because you're politically persecuted. Can you do me a favor, hot cheeks, and just run the machine for us, will you? Be like a, make like a secretary and, and clickety clack. I don't work buttons. Why Adams is complaining now that we're getting all these immigrants when he supports the policies of Joe Biden at the border. The mayor of New York is crying that we can't handle all these immigrants coming. And uh, I, I'm, I'm worried that we can't handle all this Botox. It, it, you can't move the top of your face. You can't interview Hill. Into the state. What do you think about that? He should do something about it. Stop talking about it. Be about it. What should he do? Do something. Yeah, I agree. What? Well, well spotted. You need. Do you think he's doing anything? He's not doing a god thing, but sitting on his talking about it. Let's be about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> some. Well, that that sums it up. That's great. Uh. By the way, uh, obviously that woman is a communist and, um, you know, because she's wearing a mask and it's uh, 2022. So clearly uh, she's, that's an AOC voter. I don't know why they're listening to her. Sometimes you wish you could talk like that. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I do. <laughs> Ugh. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this one. This is gross. <laughs> He's the one who, who announced that we're going to take care of everyone. We welcome everyone. Uh, we've given him the right to vote. Yeah, well, non-citizen. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's unconstitutional. We're fighting that. Yeah, Staten we're Island fighting it. Fighting that. We brought it. that lawsuit. All the Democrats right. passed it. Right. Uh, he's given him health. By the way, uh, um, these are um, resident aliens have the right to vote in municipal elections, not in federal or state elections. We give them health coverage in, in New York. Not every other place gives them health coverage. You know, in fact, I don't know. Yeah, which is disgusting. I don't know why anybody would, any of these guys would turn down coming to New York. Well, if I remember correctly, you made New York City a sanctuary city. It was a sanctuary for every resident in New York that was safe. You made it safe from crime. Right, he was trying to turn the phrase on itself. 
and, um, you know, he made it safe from crime. Therefore, it was a sanctuary city. And did you see the look on, uh, on Giuliani's face? I'm not even sure he still gets it. You made it. it a perfect sanctuary for us, the residents. You made it safe from crime. You made this city financially secure, and you created jobs for the city. Yeah, it was a sanctuary for the rest of us, not the criminals. For people who wanted to work. Exactly. People who wanted to contribute. Exactly. People who wanted to be, be good people. The interesting thing about everybody that we talk, Edit. talk to is most people in New York, at least in Manhattan, seem to really support the illegal immigrants coming in and saying that New York should do something to help them Yeah, it's more. a shame. That's why so New York that's... has more psychiatrists than any place <laughs> in the country. Manhattan has probably per capita more psychiatrists than any place in the country because it's the most brainwashed part of America. With I was... the exception. What, what the fuck? Do you think that's new? Jesus Christ. It's like a joke from a Woody Allen movie. Maybe a bit. In 1978. I was surprised, like Kara said, the, the amount of... By the way, nobody at that table knows what the fuck he's talking about. People that were saying, well, if we, we have the resources, yeah. maybe we should get them some mental health. You know what we should do? No, you know, I, have, I have a way to fix it. Oh, boy. Until they want to live next to them. Why don't we commandeer, like, uh, the extra bedroom in their apartment right, exactly. and put one person in each extra bedroom? <laughs> like, uh, when the one who says, oh, it's only right to have... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to give you uh, right. so yeah, and so. Exactly. What's his background? I don't know. We never checked him out. Here, here yeah. he is. When did he take a bath last? Uh, who knows? Sponsor. He's yours. He's he Does he have? By the way, people do sponsor uh, <laughs> immigrants for the record, uh, Catholic charities and the like, which is one of the reasons why uh, they were sending buses up from the border. They were going to like Catholic charities where they were sponsoring children and women who were here waiting their waiting out their asylum claims. What what they seem to make it, the distinction is is that it is. That's saying, I would rather my tax dollars go to this than that is the equivalent of saying um, them automatically being nimby about stuff instead of going, look, nobody has the capacity one to one to deal with uh, Im the immigration issue. Therefore, I would like my tax dollars to be spent aiding the situation and not destroying the situation. And, and in this particular case, when you have people showing up in New York, you want services available so that it, it doesn't bleed over into the, the like the, the regular services, like where people go to the hospital and they can't afford to pay or they, you know, don't have any options. So that drives up the cost for everybody else. Hence, by the way, the ACA, similar thing for, for Americans who found themselves in a situation where they're, um, where they're not financially capable or they don't, they lack insurance. So if they got sick or something, they would just have to, you know, ditch out on the bill, therefore raising the cost of everybody else, uh, you know, in terms of medical costs. By a attenuating that cost out over everybody, you keep it lower in theory anyways. And then the exact same th thing is true of any kind of immigration system. If you spread it out over a wider group of people, then there's services available and people can help themselves eventually. COVID. We don't check them for COVID. I personally... We don't check them for COVID. Yes, they do. Live in the city. I mean, they just do. They do. Like, this is so weird. He's been saying this forever. My whole life, I've been coming in and out of Manhattan from Staten Island my whole life. Yeah, mostly to come see your shrink. We were just out there talking to people in the street the other night. Yeah, this is about Abbott, Abbott busing migrants from Texas to New York. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that if you'll recall, last year... Um, hold on. Uh, bus loads immigrants. Uh, whoops, Catholic. Whoops. Um. Let's see, four days ago, where is it? It's not not. I can still do you my address. It's twenty twenty. Just as to. Um, Catholic Antonio is on Wednesday. Governor of the nation order of strict transportation. I don't know why he's but he's Catholic. Okay, hold on. Um, New York, I'll have to find it up here. Uh, I want to say it was Long Island, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let me look this part up. It'll take a little while because there's so many because it. There's a lot of these stories are new in here um, because of what's been happening recently. Um, Rives in Washington, 16th, 22th, Catholic Church for Christmas. 
Well, this is 20. This is 2018. Hold on. Yeah, so all the way back, uh, Catholic Charities has been um, like working with immigration, sponsoring immigrants. Um, they obviously this this article is from South Texas, El Paso area, where they moved down there specifically to help reunify the families. But at the same time, they've been moving a lot of these like separated children and and mothers, especially who you know are separated from the father, or they're not even in the picture, or what have you, or they came here seeking asylum. They end up getting moved up to New York, and and Catholic Charities actually in 2018. Uh, uh, this is story. Uh, Catholic Charities prepares command post for immigrant family reunifications. Catholic Charities of San Antonio is preparing for busloads of immigrant families after being granted a government contract to re reunify children separated from their families along the border. Since Friday, the nonprofit has been working round the clock to transform their headquarters into a command post. This is the first step. When people get here, each desk space has a laptop as well as a phone and a printer. The phone is the most critical item lining the desks. Uh, this is so families can call and, te and tell loved ones, Back home, we're out, we're together, we're safe, and here's what's going to happen next. By the way, immediately after this, this is July 2018, um, this is when uh, Trump started his, like right as this was getting set up, this is when Trump started the whole, uh, you know, zero tolerance policy. I have never seen so many homeless people right. as I see right now. Everything's gotten worse since de Blasio. Crime is up 40%, homelessness is up. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, the guy is, I think the woman's right. He just shoots his mouth off. Because <laughs> uh, homelessness and shootings are up for Adams. How long has he been in the office? Nine months? I don't think he's done anything for the city. No, not in, what is it, a year now? Eight months, nine Talks months, about whatever? Mm-hmm. A year now, eight months, nine months. Who do, who can't solve all the New York problems in eight nine months? He, 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 you know what he does? He was he do dress his shop. <laughs> and he goes to the nightclubs and hangs out with the right. paparazzi and the elite and the, and the elite. Deep. But he, he hasn't done much. Yeah, at least uh, Giuliani never hung out with anybody at you know who had their name on a building or anything. He, he does. Like a, he rolls with an entourage. He rolls. And, you know. This week he came out with a statement, Carrie. He said, "Well." If if Greg Abbott thinks he's going to keep sending all these immigrants up here, I'm going to send some crews of people to go down there and knock on doors for Beto O'Rourke. Well, yeah. Um, First of all, oh, the, everybody's going to Texas anyway. Leaving New York. Right? <laughs> 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 uh -huh. Number one. And, um, you know, that's just, just him being... No, they aren't, by the way. Like, even the California story, like, turned out to be BS. I think... Uh, the, the sum total of people moving out of uh, California to New York was um, Joe Rogan and Ben Shapiro. Um, everybody else stayed. Completely ridiculous. I mean, obviously, that's not going to work if he sends people down there to knock on doors. But, hey, look, we got some mixed opinions in the street. And yeah, absolutely. In Texas, if you have an Italian accent, they're not going to listen to you. But please continue. I like that because it's always good, you know. To you, gotta, you sound like a New Yorker. They're going to tell you to fuck off hear both sides of the story right and i was really surprised by that woman that we just right. looked at i thought just judging the book by the cover she, mm -hmm. she was gonna come down on the side of eric adams yeah. and say oh he's doing a great thing and she basically said get off your butt and do something about it yeah and also being in New York. well I'm, I'm sorry do you think she would show the one clip of a person she interviewed if they didn't agree with your point of view fuck are you talking about this wasn't just random you chose that clip it's your show dumb dumb New York city really shows you and asking people their opinions just how well propaganda works because they're so brainwashed in new york city yeah so everybody else that was the only person she could find that agreed with her so they had to play that one and that's why that's what her complaint is Manhattan. It's ridiculous. but, but you're, you're Manhattan, right exactly. you know, carrie you're absolutely right you get out of manhattan right you guys know this because you have staten island brooklyn queen it's very, very different. It was true when I was mayor, too. Many, many more realistic people when you get out of this bubble. You mean immigrants? Of yeah. Manhattan. Some strange stuff. By the way, none of these assholes get out of the bubble of Manhattan. Are you fucking kidding me? What's going on uh, on that topic with how kind of the fake news kind of poisons the narrative. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
after we were at the Port Authority this week, we went up to Trump Tower. Trump was in oh, town. Oh, So you got outside the battle, the uh, the bubble. Good. In New York yeah. City, and we spoke to some people outside there. <laughs> oh God! They talked to the people out the the people who showed up because of the raid. And eh. even sorry, the search people that were kind of <laughs> Trump supporters mm -hmm. um, were saying, well. A, Judge signed the order, and the FBI must have had something to go on. <laughs> yeah. um, they don't recognize the FBI anymore. So this they don't they don't know that they don't recognize the FBI. Why? Because they're a agreeing that they were serving a lawful search warrant. There's, there's a lot of mixed tales oh. out there. There's a lot of mixed tales out there. Why don't these tell us, Giuliani? Why does the average Trump supporter? think the FBI is a criminal organization. Please enlighten us. I'm going to take a quick break right yeah, now. I'd we're going to come back and that. we're going to dig. Oh, so I want to talk about that. Can it's even sad. deeper. It's sad. It's, oh, God. Into the raid of Donald Trump's. Into the raid of Donald Trump. After this. It's the Sebastian Maniscalco of, of Newsmax. In Florida. Do not move. More wise guys coming up. That's some fairly heavy editing. Okay, come back. We, we had to live through half that fucking clip, and we haven't even gotten to Giuliani saying anything of substance yet about this stuff. The title of the goddamn clip is what Trump told me right after the FBI raid. All right. Oh, my God. Welcome back. You're watching Wise Guys. This is the show we take it from the streets right to the table. And this week, the streets are on fire. They are they're on fire. They're not technically and when we went out to find some fire and even the people in front of trump tower were like i don't know it's the fbi they seem like good guys and we take it straight from the streets to the table i mean it's a nice table i gotta say what what a spread you know uh everywhere you go people are outraged everywhere you go people are outraged why is the fbi raiding the home of a former president uh why does the former president live in a fucking country club like like leona helmsley wait a minute this has never happened in the history of america huh let's see it's been a lot of presidents and this has only happened to one of them maybe it's the entire system he started his candidacy and his presidency being spied on by the fbi uh, no, 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 he, he didn't. They were pinging cell phones and a bunch of them pinged to Russian numbers. Why, why would it, why would they spy on him? How would it be spying on him? Why are they using Russian burners? And now, almost two years later, they're still spying. Almost two years later. After, the, after his election, but it's been six years. Never mind. On Donald Trump. Why? We talked to some people in the streets. I'm joined again by my crew, uh, America's lawyer, Carol Castronova, and uh, a guy who has more insight on this than probably anyone on the planet, America's Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Oh, good, because uh, you know you got a you, you know what the uh, combo is to that padlock, right? You you know what's in there. You helped him move the shit in. You helped him secure those documents. You know exactly what they are. Tell us. Tell us uh, everything there is to know about this stuff. Obviously, you you are deeply engaged in any of these materials found to be removed illegally from the White House. Definitely have your fingerprints on them. So why don't you <laughs> stop looking at me like you fucking panic? Tell them. Joins us again. So I want you to. There's a, like a whole range of people who supported Trump who are outraged, and people who didn't support Trump or independents who are still saying, wow, maybe they're going too hard on this guy. What? Yeah, that's what's happening. You hear what this woman had to say. She was an independent. She's an independent. We found her. She's on my laptop. Uh, she was an unaffiliated voter. Um, but see how this situation swayed her, and then I want Good. you to weigh in, Mayor. Does it seem like there's this ongoing thing to try to get them to you? A little bit. I think we're being a little harsh on Trump, yes. I do. <laughs> Did you vote for Trump? Did I vote, vote for Trump? Trump? Yes. <clears throat> I mean, I didn't vote, but I but I cheered him on. Okay, so oh, for fuck's sake. Did you vote for Trump? Yes. I mean, I didn't vote, but I cheered him on. Shut the fuck up. Oh, my God.
I supported Trump by not voting for anybody. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you if you don't vote, you're supporting Trump. For, straight from the horse's mouth. She Facebook, supported she him, vote. but she didn't vote. Oh, 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 oh. But she does, fee her point of view was... As a non-voter, she's really engaged with the idea. She's outraged so much that she might not not vote again. Yeah. They're going way too hard on Yeah, they guy. are. I mean, I, I, mean I, I think you'd have to really be a true partisan to see that they haven't gone too far. Just the mere fact that uh, 250 years of history, just about never done before. Well, yeah, that's because we've never had a, an asshole like that in the White House, basically. And there's a, but there's a reason for it. It's not just... Like, yeah, yeah. It's Trump. He's a scumbag. We get it. Yes. Like a, because that's what happens in banana republics. That's what happened in Nazi countries. That's what happened in... <laughs> in Nazi countries. You know, plural. You know, Germany, Ukraine, Nazi countries. Communist countries. Have the, so the, the guy wins... Mm -hmm. And then he either kills or prosecutes the opposition. I mean, it's going on right now in South America. And when is it not? And we had the wisdom always until Biden and the Democrats. Just yeah, we had the wisdom and uh, always until to have a peaceful transfer of power where no matter who you were, you showed up at the inauguration of the next person. So that oh, fuck that. I was to show you, though, and I hate to say this because, you know, we come here and we, we, we talk about tough things every week. Yeah, totally. I've never even watched it. I don't know what the fuck this show is. And I hate to say this, but it just goes to show you how evil these people, these people. They're just evil. Yes, that's what it is. They're evil. Well, uh, you got the evil. right word. They're evil. Yeah. They're not nice Beyond. people. Yeah. America, and let's make this perfectly clear. America. Fuck you. America has been the greatest force for good in the history of mankind. And these people. And then Trump came in and fucked the whole thing. What are you talking about? He pissed on our entire form of government. He refused the peaceful transfer of power. He's undercutting elections themselves, saying that democracy is 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 a lie, essentially. People are taking all the foundational beliefs and all the goodness of America and turning it on its head. American values threatened. Uh, yes, by a former president who thinks he's going to be able to bail himself out of his financial hardships and his legal troubles with, I guess, blackmail and national security secrets. Using it against uh, everything we believe in. And I, I, it, it makes me sad. It really does. It really saddens yeah. me. You seem sad. You seem like a sad person. You seem sad. This whole thing is sad. The show is sad. And I'm sorry no one showed up to your birthday party places yeah, there's a lady in the back does she she's eating alone you said something before oh, no she's is she running things that's a camera that okay so that's the rudy camera somebody's behind the rudy camera is that is she switching things back there in third world countries and banana republics they arrest the former uh, opponent All the time. They, they, go, they kill them they kill them they arrest think, them they put um, their families Donald in jail. Trump should be in any fear of the deepest of the deep yeah, state sure. maybe killing him oh for fuck's sake i do oh get out of here it, it, here the deepest of the deep state that might kill don trump is the state of his arteries after the shit he eats and the lack of exercise in his life oh well, Gary. I at do. least putting him in jail. In many different ways, I, I do. I mean, the amount of hatred generated toward him is by him. <laughs> the kind of hatred we worry about that would set off a sick no, person. I agree. What the fuck are you talking about? What, what do you think you guys shitting on the FBI all week have actually done? There's two dead guys this week. I mean, if, if there is anything to the fact that hatred can set off sick people, then maybe you shouldn't direct hatred at the FBI. When or, or I don't know, a dude might show up at a an FBI field office that has fuck all to do with anything that happened at Mar-a-Lago and shoot up the place with a nail gun wearing body armor with a with a gun in his hand. I agree. There's no one where more hatred has been generated by the mainstream media. Who do they hate more than Donald Trump? He they hate they display it at uh, Emmy Awards. They display it everywhere. At, uh, every, everywhere. You guys. Well, I mean, I would I would. For the record, 
Um, I would say disgust. Most of what you're seeing, and and like this, since they've name dropped Kimmel, I think he and Colbert both, if they ever show an emotion towards Trump, it's not so much hate. It's more disgust. And it's an important distinction because it's not something that grinds. It's based on jealousy or anything else. He's just despicable. He's a gross human being. His treatment of women, his treatment of minorities, his treatment of of the LGBT community, his attitude towards the country as a whole as his own little fiefdom, it's disgusting. He's a disgusting dude. It's not, you know, and it's one of the reasons, by the way, where I can temper what I say to the point where it's like, I don't feel like I'm rage-filled ever on the show and why I can have a good sense of humor about it and why we can all share these humorous moments together when we talk about this stuff is because it's not rooted in hate, it's rooted in disgust. It's disgusting. It's, you know, it's, it, the man is dog shit on your stoop. President of Trump, great legal minds. They said they wouldn't let their attorneys in, even though the Trump's attorney showed. Hey, asshole, here's a good idea. Call any mobster you know, and if you don't know any, ask Giuliani, he knows a couple, and ask if their attorney was allowed to accompany the FBI when they did a raid on any uh, mob property. Any property, anybody. The answer is no, you don't get to. Showed up down there and the FBI wouldn't let him in. Is that common? Is that how it's supposed it, to it, go? It actually is. It yeah, it is. See? Hey, maybe. Look at that. Look at that. What do you know? It's actually how shit's supposed to work. Way to go. Hey, kudos, you bastard. You know, and I know a lot of people are getting upset about that, but. <laughs> I know they're upset that Trump is being treated like every other American, when we both know that uh, he farts unicorn glitter right in our faces. I can smell it right now. If I close my eyes, that's what I dream of. It's just little spritzy farts coming out of his asshole right into my right eyeball. And I just, and it's just like, it smells like home to me. You know, I know that upsets people. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty much the same. But when law enforcement is executing their warrant or doing their job. What the fuck are you air quoting doing their job for, fucko? As an attorney, you don't have a legal right to actually be there. I've, I've seen it all three ways. Right. Look at that edit. I've seen him say no. Right. I've seen him say, fine, I don't care. And I've seen him say, well, you can help me with a few things. Right. I just want to have one quick question. First, I want to- Yeah, I'm going to guess that it has to do with public defenders or RICO and the RICO ones, get the fuck out. Because if it's a RICO case, the lawyer might be involved. I think the FBI should be defunded. They actually <laughs> politically persecuted me and came to my house as well, just so you know that about yeah, they're me. Out of so control. they're absolutely There's out of no control because I'm a journalist. Okay? So, what, what, uh, they came to her house. Be Wait a minute. Why did they come to her house? Hold on. No, no, no. Is this any of this? No, no, no. Nope. Ca oh. Why did they come to her? Did she say? Only oh, in Washington, they're out of control. Right. And secondly, I just, I really just want to know how Donald Trump, since you spoke to him, feels. <laughs> okay, wait. Before we do this, uh, hold on. Newsmax, Kara, FBI, what the fuck? Kara Castronova, um... Uh, let's see, Trump on his own media was, uh, let's see, professional in a political exercise, fitness training, to a Golden Gloves Championship, Masculine Garden, she's ranked in, she's a boxer, okay, is that the same? Super bantamweight, boxer, um, Let's see, balance and career, personal life, television, political activity. She recognized Pride of New York and political activist. She was one of the organizers of the Justice for J6 rally. Um, she has appeared on Fox and Friends and other outlets. She recognized, I, hmm. One of the organizers, uh, uh, so be, they came to her because she was one of the organizers for the Justice for J6 rally. Is that what she's saying? Um... She was a trainer on The Biggest Loser. 
Bobby D showing me home TV personality character showing a Puma over last signs and I. None of it's in her Wikipedia, so we'll just... Trump praises organizer of New York rally against Governor Cuomo's lockdown. Okay. Remarkable. Remarkable. I mean, I, rep- I represented this man through uh, hell, going through hell. And he didn't pay me a fucking dime. And you know the worst times for him when they would go after Donald Jr., Eric, or Ivanka? Because they actually know something, and he's afraid the kids will roll, and he's not... He's fine with giving them up, but... And th- this time they're going after him. He really takes it. You know what he says? It's going to help me. As a he said, did you see the number of people? First reaction was, I said, Mr. President, I don't even want to talk to you about the case. We've got plenty of time to do that. And you know it's I said, um, I feel so bad, and Maria feels so bad. We, uh, and she's pretty close to crying. He said, tell her not to feel bad. We, you see the number of people in front of Mar-a-Lago already? Yeah, almost a dozen. This is going to turn around. People, American people have common sense. They've gone too far now. Yeah, this is all. That's it. That That's the whole fucking thing. We sat through fucking 12 minutes and two seconds. And that was it. He's like, don't, don't cry for me. Tell Maria, don't cry for me. It's, it's understandable. Tell Maria, don't weep. This is the, the surprise of doing business. Anyways, who is this? Really, stop, stop blaming me. Stop, stop calling. I'm not going to pay you. <laughs> 